So what is our mission? So we've identified what our mission is going to be, okay? Our mission is going to be on orbit evaluation of atmospheric models using a normal drag and drag sensor sweep and a GPS receiver. Okay. So the team, this is our uh, this is our goal for the next three years until something gets in orbit and we are able to track, we are able to verify, we are able to download data. Until the next three years, this is this is what we need to focus on. Okay. Then what is the primary mission objective? The primary there are three primary mission objectives. One is first. Once the satellite goes up, you deploy the, the sensor suite, right? And you verify successful deployment. We talked about successful deployment, right? So when, when you say successful deployment, we have to validate that it has been deployed. So we're going to either use a camera or accelerometers to verify that deployment. And then the secondary the, the second primary mission objective is Measure the strain and corresponding orbital position, time, and store all of this data on board the satellite. Okay, this is the secondary mission of sec, sorry, the first second primary mission objective. What is the third primary mission objective? You need to transmit successfully the data stored in. <coughs> Data will be stored in this objective, right? As part of this objective, data will be stored. You have to store whatever is stored in primary mission objective 2 is transmitted to SIT ground station. So only if we successfully accomplish all three primary mission objectives will our mission be a success. Okay. Even if one of them fails, the mission is a failure. And I'm do you guys do you all see the link? Why it is a failure, right? If this does not happen, <coughs> this will not happen, this will not happen, right? If this does not happen, this will not happen. If this does not happen, we just don't know if it did anything or not, okay? So that's that's the reason this is the way it is, okay? And what is the secondary mission objective? Take pictures of Earth. So we'll have a camera system. We'll take pictures of Earth and if possible, the institution here and store them on board the satellite. Okay. And the second secondary mission objective is the transmit the stored pictures along with GPS data and time to SIT ground station. Right? So if 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 these mission objectives fail, is the mission successful? Yes. yes. So these are only secondary <coughs> mission objectives. We're going to do that to do a little more than what we think we can do. Or what we think is going to be uh, mission success criteria. Okay. Now, what is the next level? Recall what is the next level. Requirements. Right. So, mission requirements is the next level. When we talk about mission requirements, what is the first kind of mission requirements we talk about? There are two mission requirements, yes. Allocated mission requirements, right? So if you look at that, let's look at allocated mission requirements. Successful deployment of drag sensor gossamer shoe. Okay. So based on this, what is the allocated mission requirement? What is the direct implication of that? What do you need? You need a Right? You 
you need this, right? What else do you need? Transmitter. Okay. Transmitter. Look at this and focus on this. You need a camera for this? Why do you need a camera? Before you need a camera, what do you need? Deployment system. Deployment system, right? So you need a So think about to be for it to be deployed, it has to be stored first. You know stored, right? Now you know what is storing. So you need a storing and deployment system. Okay? And then the third thing is deployment. Validation system. Okay, so these are the allocated mission requirements. Now you see how this was a very general description of what we are doing, right? So now it is getting a little technical. You see that that's happening, right? You're talking about drag sensor speed. Now, you see how it can be distributed as uh, among among the participants of the of the mission, right? Now, look at the secondary mission. Sorry, the second uh, primary mission objective. What is the allocated mission requirement out of that? Huh? Look at this and tell me what is the allocation GPS receiver. So you need a GPS receiver and you need a GPS transmitter. You don't need a GPS transmitter. What do you need? String. No, but what what is connected to the receiver? Antenna. So you need a GPS receiver and antenna, right? The receiver is different and the antenna is different. So we have to design an antenna as well here. You see that? So we are talking about GPS receiver and antenna. We could buy these, we could design these, that will take next, we will look at it next. But we need a GPS receiver and antenna because uh, we are going to store measure strain and corresponding orbital position. And time. So, what do we need? Okay, on board timer. All right. Real time clock. Okay. What else do you need here? Memory strength. Strain. Now, when I say these, so this drag sensor gossamer will <coughs> implicitly involve strain gauge. You see that? It has to be this drag sensor is being designed using strain gauges. So, we will stick to that. The strain gauges are are implicit in this. So what else do you need here? Storage, right? Onboard storage. What else do you need? You need a system in you essentially need a system which is going to yes read it and a system which is going to read it and store that data. Essentially, you need a computer. It will translate to a needing a computer or a satellite computer, but you have to look at it from a system <coughs> needed to the system for. 
reading the measurements and story. Anything else? Do you need anything else here? Let's look at it, you know, like a slightly higher level. We'll again go deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper to every minor thing we need. And that is how we do it. You see how high level we were, and now we're thinking about low level, low level, low level component, right? So this is how you come together and get your mission done, all right? Here, what do you need? You need a? Transmitter plus what else? You need? Always when there is a transmitter or a receiver, it is accompanied by antenna. antenna. Okay, transmitter plus antenna for downlinking the. Um, strain data okay. anything else do you need anything else here again you need a system to Access data from storage and send it to so think about it. <coughs> Can the radio directly access the data from the storage? It probably will not be able to do that. The system will access that data from the storage and send that data to the radio or the transmitter here. And the transmitter will send that data to the antenna through to the ground station. Okay. So you need a system to access data from storage and send it to transmitter. Okay. Now you can combine, you see. Just look at these two can be combined to be the derived requirement for this is okay no the derived requirement for this okay on board controller or computer right you essentially need an on board computer which is going to do that. You get it? So the computer is going to interface with the with the sensor suite. It's going to help measure it, get read whatever the sensors are measuring it, store it, and when it is needed, it will again take it from the storage and push it out through the transmitter. Okay. Now let's look at this. What was the, uh, the first secondary mission objective? So what do you need? Okay. Camera system. And a for yes. Taking pictures. Okay. A system for for accessing the the camera and.
storing the picture tape. Okay. Again, this will again translate to computer. Yes. So this is again a computer. So the computer, you see, the computer is now interfacing to different sensors. So this, the derived requirements for this is a computer. The derived requirement for this is a computer. You see how the derived requirement is is becoming more specific, right? And finally, we need a system for transmitting the pictures or it's simply, it's again, uh, transmitter plus antenna for non-linking. These pictures. And then it's the same thing, the system for Until now, so this is what is this? Uh, these two are related to this one. Okay. Now, what else? These are very. Uh, there are more allocated mission requirements. What else do you need? A power system, right? A power system to generate, store, and distribute power. Okay. What else do you need? Structure. Structure. And then you have case a mechanical structure to House B payload and the supporting system. Okay. So you see how these are breaking down, how your uh, how your mission definition is breaking down to requirements, right? Now, can you look at derived mission requirements from here? You can, right? So, let's look at the allocate, let's look at drag sensor strain gauges. What are the derived requirements here? So, you need so many strain gauges. You need, let's say, a bunch of strain gauges. You need a shoot or a, or a surface. Okay, which can be uh, where you can mount that, and you need a structure, a separate structure would be required for mounting that. Okay, you need something which is uh, so this itself 
would be a project in itself. This allocated mission requirement can be taken up as a project. You build the structure, you build the, the entire thing, and then figure out how to store it. Okay. So here, you can, um, you want to do the derived mission requirements as well? A few of them. Now, keep in mind, this is not an exhaustive list. If a mission will not happen in class. We have to spend hours, days, weeks, years, to make this list exhaustive, and that is what you guys need to do. Okay, sit down with your with your uh, uh, faculty member, pick their brain, and say, what else can we add? What else can we add? Okay, so that is what you need to. This is not an exhaustive list by this is not an exhaustive list by any means. This is just a whatever has come, uh, well, whatever we have come up with here. This is that. But you need to re-look at this, go back and re-look at this and see what are the, what are more of these allocated mission requirements, okay? So just keep this in mind. Now, let's look at the derived mission requirements and let's try to get to, let's say, some components, interfaces and tasks. Okay. Now imagine first let's focus on the payload. Okay. So the payload is actually that drag chute, right? The drag chute itself is a payload. Thinking when you want to think about this drag chute, think about an umbrella. Right? What do you think about? Anybody have an umbrella? You don't have an umbrella. Girls are not carrying an umbrella. So if you have an umbrella, what are the different parts of that umbrella? You have the the surface. The, what is the main thing in the umbrella? Huh? What is the main thing in the umbrella? The cloth is the cloth is what protects you from the rain, right? That is the main spokes. If, this, if, if somehow the cloth could be suspended, do you need the handle? You don't need the handle. If somehow the cloth could be suspended without the handle, do you need the handle? Do you need that this thing? Button? Do you need the spokes? If somehow the cloth could be suspended, if somebody was, if four people are holding it like this, you know the olden days. That is also an umbrella, right? So do you need the spokes? No. So what is the main thing? So you have to understand what the main thing is. The main thing is that cloth. Okay. Now that is where our imagination should be focused. Our imagination should be should go wild. We should not think about umbrella. Oh, we need the handle. We don't need the handle. It is just that it is designed so that it is conveniently designed that way. But the main thing which does the function of an umbrella is that that surface. Okay. So here, when we talk about the payload, what is that main thing? <laughs> that drag shoot, right? That drag surface is the main shoot, and that drag shoot has to be has to have sensors on it. Here, the drag shoot is an umbrella with sensors on it. So that is what our main thing is. Okay, so that when we talk about derived mission requirements, we need to figure out, I'm just going to give this area as
more challenging. So 2,500 centimeters square is 25 into 100. So 25 centimeter into 100. So this will increase. So if you're looking at a 15 to 15. 15 to 15. Yes. Uh, if you're looking at a, a one new satellite, okay, by how much is the area increased? What is the surface area of a one new satellite? 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters? Yes. So it's 100 square centimeters, right? How many times does the area increase? 25 times. So you have to look at increasing the area by 25 times. Okay, drag shoot of area 25. So here you need think about material. Material which can be stored and deployed, okay? And um, this is one. Cool. Strain gauges on it. So I'm giving, going to give you this. Strain gauges. Now you have to look at strain. You know what flexible PCBs? Flexible PCBs. So many, I'm sure many faculty members will know flexible PCBs. So these flexible PCBs can be. You know what a PCB is. Everybody knows about a PCB is. PCB is. Printed circuit board, right? Are all printed circuit boards flexible? No, sir. No, sir. So there is a there is a flexible printed circuit board which you can. More you can bend and do things with it. Now, do we need something like that for the drag shoot? Yes. yes, because think about your umbrella again. When it compresses, that flexible circuit will also compress with it, and it will get stored in that. And that's where your strain gauges will be mounted. Now, these strain gauges can be mounted in different orientation. You know what principal stresses are? Anybody? Mechanical? Principal stresses, longitudinal stress, normal stress, shear stress. So all those different stresses in different directions, you need to design your this thing such that it measures stress in all of this thing. Okay, so you do have to look at strain gauges on a flexible printed circuit board, which can be mounted on the shoe. Okay, what else do you need? What was the, what are the two here, what are the three, um, can somebody repeat the three, the first three listings? The first is drag shoe, the second one was storage, storage, storage. 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 stowing and deployment system, right. So when we come to stowing and deployment, what do we think about? How are you going to store this? Depending on the shape, we need to identify how to right. the circular different methodology, square or rectangle. So what I'm going to give you is now here is my listing. I can give you 
something for storing and deployment. Do you want me to give it to you or you want to think, of, think about it on your own and come up with something? Storing and deployment, how do you store this? How will you typically, now let's, let's do a little bit of brainstorming here. How would you go about storing this? What is it that you know can be used for storing the, the shoot? How will you store that? Huh? No, no, stowing is, is kind of, you know, think about an umbrella again, okay? Now, umbrella, when it is compacted, that is stowing, right? When it does that, that is deployed. So, there is a stored state and there is a deployed state. Now, what is this, how are you going to, can you, are you going to use the same umbrella structure? Do you want to use that? Huh? So you want to use it like a tent? This way? Yes, that is one way. So that is what is happens in an umbrella, right? It, it's, it gets folded into multiple layers and then it is compressed. That's what you are saying? Okay. Uh, try try to think on your own. Try to this is where you know you have you'll have to separate yourself. There is nothing there is nothing wrong in uh, doing a literature survey and figuring out uh, you know what others have done. That's a wonderful thing to do. That is what we have to do. We don't want to reinvent we. Now since you know that, can you can you give me something new? Think about it. It's, I'm, I'm not putting you on the spot, but can you think about something new? Anybody? Now, depending on the shape, we can, uh, or we, we can come up with a shape also. We can come up with a shape also. Let's for, for example, let's say the shape is a, is a rhombus, okay, or a square. Yeah. Square with the poles. Square with the poles. Then it right, so it could be like this, right, and then it could close like this and come like this. That's one suggestion. Good, that's good. So you, do you understand what he said? So you have, so if you look at the umbrella, umbrella opens like this, right? Can you have an umbrella that opens like this? You can have, right? There's no nothing wrong in that. Um, so what you can do is, you have, you have a telescopic boom, okay? You know what a telescopic boom is? You know what a telescopic telescope is, right? You know what telescopic is? It will go inside. Yeah. So telescope is telescopic is something which will compact, okay? So if you have one arm, two arms. Another two arms, vertical and horizontal. Okay, and then your shoot is inside this. You have this, right? The shoot is connected here. Two corners are connected here. Two corners are connected here. There are four of these, right? Everybody can see this? You can see this? No? So there are four arms, right? The four arms can deploy like this. One, two, three, and four. You see that? And the shoot is connected to 
in edges or the corners. So when 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 this happens, when they go inside, what happens? The shoot gets compacted inside these arms, right? And if you design these arms to be each of these arms to be telescopic, what you can do is you can compress it and make it smaller. Correct? So, so that's what he is suggesting. Is that a good design? So what do we need for the stowing and deployment mechanisms? Actuators or what do you need? Very simply put, we need four telescopic arms. Okay, four telescopic arms. Do we need four telescopic arms? Okay. Keep a track of what, what is here, okay? I'm going to ask you. The this is the sensor itself. This one and this one together, that is the sensor itself. Now we are talking about the deployment mechanism. Okay. So we need four telescopic arms of size. What size do you think? And this is where you have to quickly, quickly tell me what size it should be. Huh? Less than 10? Huh? It's simple. It has to be, it has to be 25, right? Because 25, 25 is? 50 by 50 is? 2,500. Simple, right? So at least 25 centimeters. So this is how you need to think. 25 centimeters, right? This is the deployed length. Deployed length is 25. What is the stored length? What should be the stored length? Less than 10 centimeters. Okay. Of size 25 centimeters when deployed, And less than 10 centimeter when stored. You see that? So again, this it's up to you as to how many sections you want to have. How many sections would you want to have? It's a telescopic boom. How many sections do you think you should have? What is the minimum number of sections? Or what is the yeah? What is the minimum number of sections? Huh? Minimum number of sections is two. Can we do with minimum two sections? Why not minimum two sections? It has to. It is. It's, it is section. Just two sections will give you twelve point five. Right? You cannot do minimum two sections. You have to do at least. Minimum three sections. So let's go with four, four. four sections. Okay. So you have each arm will have a uh, dimension. Less than okay, about six centimeters is what we are looking at. So, six centimeter each section means. You're actually looking at about seven centimeter each section. So what's going to happen is it's going to go in. There's going to be a, a centimeter of uh, overlap. Okay. So you have six, 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 twenty-four. 
the last one would not have anything, so that would be pretty fine. So it is finally phase copy. It's open still. Open. This is just. You are giving the examples. Yes, I'm just. Giving. This is an example. The mission. Uh, can we finalize the mission itself? You want to. You want to keep that open as well. Yeah, you can keep that open. I mean, I agree. Let's even the mission itself. We can keep it open if you think. There's something you want to do something else, it's, it's, you can do that. But we have to. Do we want to set a date for finalizing the mission, faculty members? By the end of this course, we should have a mission. Is that okay? Hmm? Within that. So before Saturday. If you want to do it again, this cycle has to be. That's fine. We'll do that, or we'll uh, just uh, we'll ask the students. You guys will do it. Come on. Yes. Sir. yes. You have to be. You know, it's like this. Even if you don't know, say yes, and then figure out how to do it. If you if you are hesitant, that's it. Take it from. You'll never do it. No, if you're hesitant, so just say yes. So I'll do it. Whatever it is, don't don't worry about what you what you're doing. Then figure out how to. You're all in that uh, this thing, so you can figure it out. Okay. So four telescopic arms and all that. Um, now, what else do we need? The now, how are you going to deploy this? Huh? Motor. You want to add a motor? Do you really want a motor? Spring, spring, right? Spring is a much simpler this thing. Just put these booms inside a spring, and then use a switch to activate the spring, right? Just do this, and once you activate the spring, very simple to what you have in an umbrella. Umbrella has a spring. Yes. Where is the spring? In that telescopic this thing, okay. So you have a the uh, so it's four telescopic boom and uh, so here I'm going to capture this as another requirement. A spring load and mechanism. Which can be activated using a switch or relay. Okay, so you have a spring. This would be a spring loaded mechanism. Okay, everything is stored inside, and you have a switch. You send a signal from here, that switch gets activated or the relay gets activated and that thing gets released. Okay. What, so what, was the, what were the three here again? The second was uh, this deployment mechanism. What was the third? Deployment validation. Okay. So what I'm going to write here is a camera or an accelerometer sweep. Okay, you need a camera or an accelerometer sweep for deployment validation. Or The if we if we plan this mission, so here is what we'll do. If we plan this mission step by step, uh, all this will not be pre-programmed. It will be pre-programmed, but it will not be executed as a sequence of events. 
what's going to happen is um, you send a signal, right? And then um, it will deploy the response. And it will go back. It will again wait for your signal, your signal to do the measurements. Now, between the time it, it deploys that thing and starts measuring, if you want to validate, sometimes you know the signal is going so far, the signal may not, the signal itself may not reach. So you want to in between. So it's it's a stage by stage. Once you deploy it, you want to go into Once you deploy it, you want to um, validate that, that it is deployed and then send another command saying start taking the measurements. And then send another command to send the data back. So during those two, between those two, this thing, you want to make sure that it is deployed. If it is not deployed, you're going to send another signal saying deploy it. That is the reason we need. We need to validate the deployment. As much as possible, what we do for a space mission is do it in small steps and then keep validating every uh, every step. Does that make sense? But uh, it will increase the mechanism. Right. It will, it will increase the mechanism in the sense it may make the things a little bit complicated. Uh, but again, we can take a call on that if you think that uh, when you're designing, when you're actually designing, if you think the, the including the sensor is is too complex. We have the sensor train gauge mounted on that, and mm -hmm. then uh, we can come to the inside. Right, right. And then open. It may strain uh, the strain gauge. So this, the, this, this accelerometer will be on the other end. You can put the accelerometer or even the camera on the other end and then you can see whether it is deployed. Camera investment, you know, it will not be an additional investment. Right. We have another mission requirement, I mean, objective. The camera, the thing with camera is, now, if you, if you choose a camera for this one, it may not be in the same, if you want to picture Earth, right? If you want to take a picture of Earth, now you have to think about the orientation of this. So let's say this is your drag shoot, right? In what direction or what orientation should this drag shoot be? If you want to try to measure, let's say you're running. Yes, it is. It should be. Tangential to orbit. Tangential or normal to orbit. It should be so normal to the perpendicular to the orbital velocity. Okay. So if you have this, the velocity is like this, right? So this should be perpendicular to the velocity vector. Got it? Your camera should be facing me. Assuming the this thing is orbiting like this. The camera should be facing towards Earth, right? That's what you want to do. Now, can you use this camera to take a picture of this? You may not be able to take a picture unless you have some means of doing that. Rotating so, what? Rotating the camera. Rotating, rotating the camera. Now, you have this. What I'm suggesting, this is the boom I'm talking about, okay? If you place a camera here or if you place a sensor here, once this happens, this sensor is going to measure. It's going to get activated. The, dra the, the strain gauges are here. The drag sensor is here. So if you, do you feel, so this is simple. When you open the umbrella, do you feel a jerk in your hand? Yes. That can be sensed by a cam, sensed by an accelerometer. So if you mount, if you, Align the axis of the accelerometer. If one of the axes of the accelerometer is aligned in that direction, that direction will measure the, will give you the maximum reading at that point. And then you can easily, that can be easily interfaced to the, uh, to the onboard computer network. 
in my shirt. Okay. So that is the reason I I got uh, the accelerometer from America. It's camera would be a nice thing, but it will be challenging to maneuver the camera and take a picture. Right? So if you can do it with simple sensor, and if it is complex, if the design you see is complex, because I'm adding the weight also. If you think the design is too complex, then you just all right. Let's do one thing. Let's take a five five ten minute break and come back. Is that okay? Don't go for too long. Not How long do you want? I will see. Please, alright. Okay. <laughs> I think we can club this. Right. Guys, want tea? How many of you all drink tea? Tea has come. Tea has come. How many of you all drink tea? Drink tea. Why do you drink tea? <laughs> 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 